Okay, fantastic. All right, welcome everybody. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this joint webinar presented by Toby Technology and Mediative. The topic is Display Ad Effectiveness, Performance on Tablets versus Desktop. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm one of your two co-hosts for today. My name is Wilkie Wong and I'm the Director of Knowledge Services, which means I'm generally involved in training, uh, methodology training as well as technical training with respect to eye tracking and I also get out in the field and uh, do uh, research in the field myself. Um, I'm also going to, well I guess at this point I'm going to hand, uh, hand off straight away to, uh, to Ian Everdell who will take it from here, uh, but before I do, uh, for all those uh, people who just signed on, uh, if you have questions, <clears throat> please go ahead and type them uh, into the chat box and I will uh, collect them and uh, we'll present them at the end and uh, Ian and I, and I will take the questions. All right. So uh, Ian, are you ready? I'm going to hand over the, the, the reins to you. Okay. Great. Thanks, Wilkie. Hi, everyone. My name is Ian Everdell. I'm the manager of user experience and research at Mediative. If you're wondering what Mediative is, we're a digital marketing company. We, we provide um, performance services like um, search marketing, user experience, market research, um, and other services like that, and also access to media platforms. So we're um, helping organizations and our clients enhance their digital presence and turn uh, website visitors or searchers into buyers. Uh, my role at the company is to lead all of our user experience and research uh, initiatives, um, including user experience testing, market research, we do lots of buyer behavior interviews and things like that. Um, and I'm involved across all of those projects uh, in terms of designing, executing, and, and analyzing all of our research findings. If you haven't heard, tablets are growing really fast. They're a very popular platform. They're becoming more popular by the minute, it seems. Um, eMarketer estimates that there will be almost 70 million tablet users in the U.S. by the end of 2012, and that growth is predicted to um, continue right up to uh, 2015. Tablets are expected to surpass shipments of notebooks uh, in 2017, so tablets really are one of the computing platforms of the future. And part of that as well is that obviously advertising on those platforms is going to become really important. Um, and one of the things that we were really interested in looking at was the difference between interaction with advertising on desktop computers versus a tablet platform. So what we're going to be showing you today are um, the results of a study that we did comparing display advertising on a desktop PC versus an Apple iPad. Uh, and we collected eye tracking data while we were doing that. So we were interested in, in seeing how the visual attention that advertising gets on those two platforms differs. In terms of specific research questions, we were wondering um, what differences there are in the visual attention captured by display advertising on those two uh, platforms. Um, how do people observe web pages on the, containing those two ad, or containing those ad formats on the two different platforms, and then how do display ads perform differently depending on the type of content that people are viewing. So we looked at a number of different um, content verticals as well. To give you a quick preview of what we're going to talk about in the results, uh, we did see differences in how quickly ads capture attention on the two platforms. We saw differently, differences in how effectively display ads hold attention on the desktop versus the iPad. We saw differences in uh, attentional metrics for different types of ads. And we saw differences in attention metrics between different content verticals. So we saw um, people interacted with ads differently depending on the type of site they were on. So before we get into the results, I'm going to hand it back over to Wilkie, and he's going to go through uh, the methodology that we used for this project. Um, and I'd like to remind you that if you have any questions along the way, please feel free to type them into the chat box, and uh, we'll, we'll collate those for us to answer at the end of the webinar. 
Okay, fantastic. Thanks. Thanks, Ian. I just uh, fix my headset here. Okay. Um, all right. So let's uh, let's move through the next three slides or so to uh, set the stage for the uh, results and findings. So let's first take a look at the uh, the hardware systems uh, that that are under test. Um, as far as the uh, the eye trackers for the desktop component of the research, we use the Toby T60. Now this eye tracker is a real workhorse in the usability domain, primarily because of its ease of use and, and robustness. Uh, it's quite tolerant to uh, to uh, participant characteristics, so uh, so it's easy to get uh, good good quality data from the uh, T60. Uh, we we ran that at its full hardware resolution at 1280 by 1024. To test uh, on the iPad. Uh, we use the mobile device testing solution, which uh, consists of the X60 modular eye tracker uh, and the mobile device stand, which is an accessory for mounting phones, tablets, e-readers, uh, things, things of uh, things of that nature. Okay. Uh, as far as the stimuli. Um, we looked at a number of advertising formats. Uh, the the big three that we focused on were the leaderboard, skyscraper formats, and big box. And Ian will describe those in a little bit more detail as we go ahead. Um, to probe any potential effects of the website context in which these ads were encountered, we selected sites from eight different content categories or verticals, ranging from entertainment to news and retail. And uh, with regard to methods and metrics, if you recall from a slide Ian presented earlier, the key questions in this study uh, involve understanding the looking behavior of participants viewing sites containing ads in the target formats. More specifically, uh, this means quantifying gaze behaviors that provide insight into the power of these ads to capture visual attention. Metrics such as time to first fixation, and percent of participants fixated tells us about the rapidity and completeness of attention capture. Uh, now once you've grabbed the eyes, you want to hold on to them. Uh, to measure the ability of ads to engage both visually and cognitively, we gathered engagement metrics such as view counts and durations. And with that, I'm going to turn the mic back over to Ian who will detail the study's findings and takeaways. Okay, give it a second, it should go back. Uh, let me try it again. Here we go. Okay, there you go, Ian. There we go. All right, so the first ad format that we looked at was the classic leaderboard. So this is the 728 by 90 presentation that you typically see at the top of a screen. Um, and these are one of your classic ad formats. Um, if you're familiar with uh, sort of the banner blindness uh, phenomenon that seemed to be very popular earlier in the 2000s, um, these were subject to that phenomenon a lot of the time. Um, so we really wanted to see how that priority spot at the top of the page functioned in terms of attention capture and engagement. Um, on the PC versus the desktop, or pardon me, versus the tablet. So if we look at how effective these ads were in capturing and holding attention, what we see is on the PC, leaderboards captured attention uh, almost twice as fast as they did on the iPad, and they captured the attention of slightly more people. Now I mentioned banner blindness. We saw that uh, in our testing, leaderboards captured the attention of almost 40% of participants. So there are still lots of people looking at them, uh, which is great. Uh, on the iPad, what we saw was that leaderboards, while they don't capture attention as quickly, they actually end up holding attention longer. So for the people who do look at them, they spend more time engaged with them. And if you look at the graphic on the bottom of the screen here, you'll see one of the potential hypotheses behind why people engage um, with the ads for a longer amount of time on the iPad is that um, on the left is a screenshot from the desktop, on the right is a screenshot from the iPad. You'll see that relative to the entire screen, the ads take up more space on the screen. So it's possible that uh, by taking up more space, there's 
fewer distractions for the eyes. That it takes them theoretically longer to move to other parts of the screen. So it, that is one of the potential explanations for why they hold attention longer on the iPad. If we look at comparisons between leaderboards and the other types of ads that we looked at, so skyscrapers and big boxes, um, leaderboards were by far the most effective type of ad on both the PC and the iPad. On the PC, they captured attention faster than the other ad formats, more people looked at them than the other ad formats, and they also had um, a higher number of looks altogether on the PC. On the iPad, we see a similar phenomenon where more people look at them, um, but also on the iPad, again, similar to the higher engagement we saw between PC and iPad, they also have a higher engagement uh, than the other ad formats, so people spend longer looking at them as well. So leaderboards seem to be a very effective uh, type of advertising on both platforms, and particularly if you're looking for engagement with your ads, leaderboards are great on the iPad. In terms of key takeaways for leaderboards, remember they're seen faster on PCs but hold attention longer on tablets. Um, and they were the most effective ad unit studied. So if you're looking for you know, the most bang for your buck, leaderboards are probably a good way to go, especially if you're getting um, a lot of mobile traffic. They also get very good engagement on the iPad, so that suggests that you could look forward to good brand recognition, hopefully really good click-through rates um, on the iPad. And this leads us to conclude that the top and center ad placement is still a strong and privileged place to be. It's a good place to advertise. You're going to get lots of exposure up there. If we move on to skyscrapers, so these are the 160 by 600 ad units that typically run down the right-hand side of the page. Again, these were often subject to the banner blindness phenomenon that I talked about. Um, so getting another look at how often people interact with them is important for us. On the PC, um, similar to the leaderboards, they capture attention faster than on the iPad. But unlike leaderboards, they actually also hold attention longer than on the iPad. Um, so you're getting good engagement and good attention capture on the PC. However, what we saw on the iPad was they actually capture the attention of more people. So um, I think about one in seven people on the PC looked at skyscraper ads. On the iPad, that more than doubled. So we had about one in uh, three people looked at skyscrapers on the iPad. However, one of the interesting things to note with the skyscraper, because of its typical position on the right-hand rail, and you'll see this in the image at the bottom of the screen, the green box shows where that skyscraper is on that page, and you'll see that it's masked by the hand. So this is a, a potential issue that you need to be aware of when you're considering ad placement and ad buys, is that if you're getting a lot of tablet traffic, and this would apply to smartphones as well to some extent, that there's an interaction there that isn't present on a desktop. There's something that's going to mask the screen and potentially cover up your ad. Now, does that mean that your ad isn't going to be as effective? Not necessarily, and we would hypothesize actually that sort of tracking the finger um, and looking where the hand was just after scrolling is actually one of the things that leads to more people seeing the skyscraper on the iPad than they did on the PC. If we look at skyscrapers versus leaderboards and big boxes, um, skyscrapers were actually the most effective ad type for keeping viewers engaged on the PC. They had um, a 22% longer fixation duration and a 27% longer total visit duration than leaderboards. So people are not looking at skyscrapers as much, but when they do, they're more engaged with them than they are with leaderboards. Now that could be you know, the format of the content, um, just the design. There are many reasons that could be, and that's why we tested um, so many different websites and so many different types of uh, ads so that we were trying to remain unbiased in terms of comparing one leaderboard to one skyscraper. Um, so there's something about the skyscraper uh, presentation format that keeps people engaged a little bit more on the PC. Now, on the iPad, skyscrapers didn't perform as well as leaderboards. 
Um, and again, our hypothesis there is that there's enough interaction from people scrolling and getting the hand in the way of the skyscraper um, that they're not interacting with them as much. Although, again, remember, uh, we did get more people ultimately looking at them. They just didn't spend as long looking at them. Finally, the third, oh, and I have key takeaways from skyscrapers. Um, so remember, they're seen faster and hold attention longer on the PCs, although they capture more attention on the tablet, as I said. And remember, that hand gets in the way. So you have to think about um, where your ads are going to be, not just in terms of the platform, but also in terms of their location on the page. So skyscrapers take longer to be noticed, but they do hold attention. So what you really have to work towards is getting that initial um, visual attention capture, because once people look at it, they're more engaged. So you want to create something that's strong and eye-catching um, so that you can, for lack of a better word, distract people from the content and get them to look at your ad. Finally, if we look at big boxes, these are the 250 by 300 um, boxes that you see. Typically, these are all over the page. They might be in the right rail. They might be embedded in the content. Um, so their placement is a lot more varied than the leaderboard of the skyscraper. And what we saw with them was that on the PC, similar to the skyscraper, they capture attention faster and they hold attention longer than on the iPad. Um, but similar to the skyscrapers, on the iPad, a few more people looked at the big boxes than they did the than they did on the PC. So again, like skyscrapers, you want to focus on creating a strong and eye-catching message and design so that you can capture that attention because once it's captured, people engage with it longer. So what do these three um, types of ads tell us about uh, in terms of engagement on the PC versus the iPad? We know that the iPad and the, the tablet format really seems to be focused on content consumption, whether that's reading an article or watching a video. It's all about that media. So it's not really surprising that um, the ads aren't necessarily capturing or holding attention as much as they do on the PC. However, what we see in these results is that they do still capture attention. It's not like um, there's this huge phenomenon, again, of sort of that banner blindness or advertising blindness happening on the PC that isn't happening on the desktop. The other thing that we wanted to investigate was whether there were differences in the way people engage with ads depending on the type of content that they were viewing. So as Wilkie said, we had people look at sites across eight different verticals um, with different tasks. Uh, so we were looking to see whether the ads captured and held attention more effectively in one category than another. On the PC, what we saw is that retail and entertainment sites were the most effective in terms of capture and engagement. Um, particularly with the entertainment sites, uh, because those sites are very heavily uh, rich media, you know, there's video trailers and that sort of thing, the ads themselves also tend to be very rich and thus um, help capture attention. They also tend to be very highly relevant to the content, which helps them um, capture attention as well. Technology sites uh, weren't as good at capturing attention, but they did hold attention well. And conversely, travel, lifestyle, and auto sites captured attention well, but didn't hold it particularly strongly. News and finance sites performed very poorly. So people are um, engaged more with the content on those sites, whether it's the news article or the stock ticker, that sort of thing. Um, on the iPad, news and finance sites, conversely to the PC, were actually our most effective sites in terms of attention capture um, and engagement with the ads. Um, similar to the PC, the travel and lifestyle sites uh, captured attention quickly but didn't hold it very well. Um, entertainment sites were very good at holding attention but didn't capture it very well. Uh, and again, that depends on the type of content being shown in those ads. And then technology performed very poorly. So there's um, a very interesting shift in those that perform well on the PC to those that perform well on the iPad. And what this means is that you need to be aware of the type of sites that your um, ads are being run on. Because understanding that 
and understanding the platforms that people will see them on will help you make smart decisions about what formats to run um, and what sort of messages and designs you need to use. And in terms of sort of a, a best practice that we're going to give you here, if the site is not as relevant to your message in your ad, so if, you're, if there's a bigger disconnect between what people are intending to do on the site and what you're trying to sell them in your ad, you want to focus on creating an ad that's going to capture their attention. You want them to glance at your ad. You don't necessarily expect them to engage with it for so long, but even getting that glance is important because it will help increase your brand recognition, your purchase intent. Um, and we actually recently released a, another white paper looking at um, the effectiveness of skyscraper ads on um, retail websites and found that, well, the click-through rate was not super high. Roughly seven times as many people who clicked looked at the ad, and that influenced that purchase intent and uh, brand recognition. Conversely, if the site is highly relevant to your message, so if you've done really good targeting, whether that's content or behavioral or geographical, um, if you're very relevant to the message um, or to the intent of the person visiting the site, then you want to focus on creating an ad that will keep them engaged. Because chances are they're going to notice your ad. You want them to then engage with it. You want them to read your message. You want them to click through. So again, this really emphasizes the need to understand where your ads are going, who's seeing them, and what context they're being presented in. So just to give you a quick recap, leaderboards were the most effective type of ad studied. They capture attention quickly on the PC. They hold attention well on the iPad. Skyscrapers and big boxes didn't capture attention as readily, but they did hold attention relatively well, especially on the iPad. And it's important to point out here, too, that um, the participants had a fairly limited exposure to the page. And since skyscrapers and big boxes are potentially farther down the page, um, it's possible that uh, not getting as much engagement with those ads is because people hadn't had as much of a chance to go through um, the content and get as far down the page as they might normally if they were um, consuming the entire page. And also, ads can perform differently depending on the website vertical. So you need to be aware of where those ads are so that you can plan your campaigns accordingly. So hopefully, Wilkie's got lots of questions rolling in. If you have any questions, uh, please let us know in the chat box or the questions uh, tool. And uh, we'll get started with the Q&A. Okay, fantastic. Uh, great. All right. I just and I just wanted to uh, expand a little bit on uh, one of the the last key points there in uh, Ian's talk. Um, let's go to this one uh, on the question of relevance. Uh, you, you know, Ian uh, Ian was able to speak to some best practices with regard to uh, if there's not a good uh, conceptual or or thematic match between the site and the ad that's being placed on it, you want to maximize attention. Uh, whereas if there's a good uh, them thematic match, then you want to focus on uh, maximizing engagement. And I just want to draw your attention back to this slide on methods and metrics. Uh, it, it is for this reason that we uh, broke the, the metrics into these two primary groupings so that we could uh, get a close look and, uh, and, and reach that conclusion. Um, it, if you're trying to capture the eye, then you're going to be focusing on this set of metrics. If you, if it's likely that uh, you're going to get good looking uh, to begin with, uh, a good attentional capture, then you're going to focus more so on the engagement metrics and understanding what aspects of the uh, the layout and uh, and the design of the ads uh, contribute to uh, um, a, a engagement, either improving it or uh, perhaps uh, being detrimental to it. So um, there's a there's certainly method to the madness. Let me uh, let me roll roll up through a couple of these questions here. Uh, we had we had one question uh, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, it was a question um, uh, to to explain a little bit more about the methodology, and uh, I I can speak to that. Um, we uh, we ran samples of um, uh, 31 on the desktop, uh, 27 on the iPad. 
uh, that, that's the final good sample. Um, we ran a couple more, and, and you generally should run a little bit of overage to compensate for uh, um, sometimes uh, bad data. Um, you s the results uh, for these metrics generally start to uh, converge and provide some good directional guidance around 20 participants. Um, if you have a need for uh, for some um, a quantitative read, uh, meaning uh, statistical significance, you're talking about uh, potentially a larger sample um, on the order of 50 to 60 to begin with. So uh, in the range of about 30 uh, in either the desktop or the iPad condition, we're getting strong directional reads, but not necessarily uh, statistically significant to P less than 0.05. Uh, OK, so let's see what else we've got here. All right, um, Ian, I've got one for you. Um, uh, this person writes, uh, and I think this is in, in, in reference to what you're talking about, the hand getting in, in the way. Uh, should we move the ads on our site so that they're not covered by people's hands when they scroll, uh, when they scroll on a tablet? How important is that? How critical is it? Um, that's a, a good question. So I, I haven't seen any research showing um, how often people use you know, the right hand versus the left hand, or they're more likely to sort of flick with their thumb versus sort of use their whole hand. We did see a number of people um, in the study, as, as the graphic shows here, actually using their hand, and it covers a fair proportion of the screen. Um, however, you know, given sort of right-handed versus left-handedness and that sort of thing, um, it also depends on the angle you're lying on the couch, um, which arm is squished into the the cushions, um, you know, you're likely to encounter some masking of the screen regardless of which side you put your ads on. Um, and of course you want to sort of um, stick with convention and best practices as well. Uh, however, certainly something that you could test if you get a lot of tablet traffic. I highly encourage you to do some A-B or multivariate testing um, with your ads, with your content, with your calls to action. Move them around on the page, see if they're more effective. Um, and you can certainly find use tools that will let you split um, all of your traffic, just your mobile traffic. Um, there's lots of options out there. And, and um, you know, I'm a big proponent of testing everything. If you have an idea like that, go for it. Try it out. OK, great. All right, uh, here's, uh, here's another question. Um, uh, I'm Let's see. Did people? Did you instruct people just to look at the web pages? Um, no, uh, we we didn't just say look at the web pages. Uh, they were given a fairly consistent structure of prompt for each of the uh, eight content verticals. Uh, there, the form of the prompt was basically you blank. Could this site help give you the information you need? And uh, blank is the statement of task. So for for the car sites. For the auto sites, it would be, you are thinking about buying a car. Uh, for the entertainment sites, it's you are trying to decide what movie to go see, and so on. So it was a fairly um, uh, consistent structure in terms of um, you have a goal, and, uh, and then the response is, um, the, the probe is, could this site give you the information you need? So it's, uh, it's, to, uh, uh, it's linked to the uh, um, information seeking on that page. Let's see. Um, here's a request by someone to talk a little bit more about banner blindness. Um, th I think this is in your bailiwick. They're saying that uh, people seem to be ignoring the ads because of the low click-through rate. Um, banner blindness, you did speak to it, but I is it still happening? How serious is it? Um, so, you know, this, this was something that really came up sort of in the early to mid-2000s. Um, you know, as humans, we are creatures of habit. We've become very accustomed to uh, knowing where ads are placed on web pages. And yes, we can often, you know, basically ignore them. If you ask people, do they remember seeing an ad? Um, you know, they'll often self-report that they don't. And that's that's where eye tracking is a really great tool because we can see that they may not necessarily consciously remember the ad, but they have glanced at it. Um, and if you follow it up with sort of probing questions about um, brand recognition or purchase intent, you'll see that even though they don't consciously remember it, there is a 
subconscious effect there. They're more likely to favor a brand or buy from them. Um, you know, we're very good at, at very quickly identifying whether something is relevant to our intent. So if your ad isn't relevant to what the person is trying to do on the website, they'll make that decision very quickly and then stop paying attention to the ad. Um, and one of the interesting phenomena about the way uh, the human visual system works is that we can often do a lot of that sort of visual processing in our peripheral vision. And unfortunately, eye tracking can't capture that. We only can capture where people um, are directing what we call foveal attention. So it's the high resolution, um, very small part. Of that, And that's why we have to move our eyes, because that's how we capture uh, high detailed information. So um, there certainly is still aspects of banner blindness, but I mentioned um, the the other study that uh, Media recently completed. We were looking at um, did display advertising on uh, the Walmart Canada website, um, and one of the ads that we looked at was the skyscraper ad um, on their uh, product category pages. Um, and it got a, a low click-through rate, but as I said, we had about seven times as many people look at it as clicked on it. So people are looking at it. Um, they're not necessarily acting on it. But when we followed that up, with, again, with questions about brand recall and purchase intent, we see that um, people are more likely to recall a brand. They're more likely to favor a brand. They're more likely to buy a brand, even though they didn't click through on that ad. So those are those more sort of intangible things that you can't measure with click-through rate. Um, so getting back to the original question, you know, it may seem like most people are uh, ignoring your ads because you're getting a low click-through rate, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they aren't noticing them at all. Okay, great. And I think the, this this question is a natural tie-in to this. Uh, and uh, essentially, uh, this attendee is asking uh, why why we didn't uh, focus more on heat maps um, uh, if the heat maps are really good to, uh, really good at showing attention. Um, and I I can certainly answer that one. Uh, the heat map is is a good tool for showing. Uh, sort of the uh, the distribution of attention it, it, it aggregates it well uh, but there isn't any sequential information on it right so you're looking at where where there's uh, more visual attention versus less visual attention more fixation spent uh, or more time spent however there isn't any sense of the actual sequence of time and when you're talking about capturing the eye uh, uh, the the metrics that relate to how quickly uh, a, pr a particular element is acquired is really only extract uh, extractable from from the from the metrics. So, um, a, you know, a strong summation of research results, uh, like we've attempted to pro provide here, and as as summarized in uh, in the white paper that uh, Media has uh, Mediative has published, uh, uses uh, the proper combination of the, uh, the visualizations as well as the proper metrics to speak to the, the particular phenomena of interest. Uh, so in the case of attention capture, that would be uh, metrics and statistics that speak to how quickly. Um, the the heat, pa heat maps are meant to give you a uh, more holistic sense of the spread or distribution of, the, uh, of attention. Uh, but there is no time information, uh, se time sequential information com contained therein. All right. So let me see what else we've got. Uh, I think that is about it for the questions. Some pretty good ones there. Ian, did, were there any points that you wanted to uh, that you wanted to finish up on? Uh, let me just put up some contact information here. Actually, that that was what I was going to suggest. If you have any questions about, um, you know, further questions about display advertising or your campaign strategies, anything like that, feel free to get in touch with one of our um, digital advertising experts at Mediative. There's lots of ways to get in touch with us. Um, if you have any questions about uh, doing research like this, if you want to look at your ads in particular, if you want to learn more about your audience, um, you know, give Toby a call, give us a call. We've been working with Toby for the last eight years, um, and we've done some really cool and exciting research with them using their technology. Um, 
and we're, we'd certainly love to have the chance to talk with you about your, whether it's advertising or market research needs. Um, so feel free to, to drop either of us a line. Um, the con contact information for Wilkie and I is also in this presentation, which is being recorded. Um, so if you want to get in touch with us individually, please do so. All right, fantastic. All right, so uh, let me let me check it to see if there are any last minute questions. I don't believe so, uh, and that brings us really right to you, uh, roughly to the end of our time. So I'm going to wrap it up here. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, everybody, for uh, sharing your time with us and attending the webinar. Um, please feel free to contact us for further information. We love to talk about this stuff, um, and uh, I suppose that is it. All right. Thank you very much. Have a great day.